Welcome class. Uh, this is going to be our first um, video for class um, for Sunday school. So we are on chapter 11 and this one is for fifth graders. We're on chapter 11 and that's going to be on page 165 of your book. So if you don't have your book yet, go ahead and go grab it. You can pause this video. Um, you'll need your pencil and an eraser. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do the video online. So we're going to start where we normally start when we gather in front of the candles in the morning at our altar when we are doing class. And we're going to go ahead and start with our prayer and our scripture reading. So go ahead and pray with me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, grant us knowledge of your teaching. Make known to me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me by your fidelity and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Help us learn to follow the way of Jesus, the one we call rabbi and teacher, the one we name Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy and the scripture reading. Then Jesus approached the apostles and said to them, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Matthew 28. 18 through 20. And that's something that we can remember during this time when we are um, we're on kind of a lockdown, we're staying home. Remember that Jesus is with us always, no matter what. And we put our trust in him, we can't go wrong. So this is, this lesson is for Sunday. Um, so I'm going to read you the gospel for Sunday, March 29th. The sisters of Lazarus sent, Lazarus sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, so when he heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to his disciples, let us go back to Judea. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary sat at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise. Martha said, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I have come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. He became perturbed and deeply troubled and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Sir, come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man have done something so that this man would not, would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. And Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He has been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? 
So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here, I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to him, untie him and let him go. Jesus said to them, untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen and seen what he had done, began to believe in him. All right, that gospel is from John 11, 1 through 45. I think that must have been amazing to witness Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. And uh, that was an amazing miracle that he did. Many and many people, like it says, many people came to believe in him through that miracle. All right, chapter 11 is uh, titled The Teaching Church. We're going to go to page 166 now. The church on earth, who teaches you about being a follower of Jesus? We're all curious about many things. Do you remember how many times you've asked the question, why? Your teachers encourage you to ask questions so you can learn. And often our teachers ask us questions to help us really understand the meaning of what they teach. And so here they have a scripture reading that's gonna tell us a little bit about a question that Jesus asks to Peter. Jesus asked the apostle this question, who do you say that I am? Peter replied, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. Jesus knew that only God could have shown Peter this truth. He said to Peter, I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Jesus also promised Peter the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So what do you think Jesus wanted the apostles to learn from this? If he asked this question today, how would you answer him? Do you believe that Jesus is the Messiah? And you guys remember what, who the Messiah is. It was um, the Jews waited for their Messiah, their Redeemer, um, the one who would come and, and save them. And we believe that that Messiah is Jesus who came to save his chosen people and to save all of us from sin. And Peter recognized that. But Jesus said that only God could have shown him that. So it wasn't just an idea that he came up with. God actually showed him that. Okay, we're going to go to page 167. When Jesus sent the apostles out to spread the good news of his father's kingdom, he also established the mission and authority of their successors. In this way, the teaching authority of the apostles is passed on through the ages. So... When Jesus sent out his apostles to spread the good news, to spread the gospel, to tell everyone about him, that they could have forgiveness for their sins. They, there was a way to heaven. There is an answer. Um, he sent them out to spread the good news that there is a Messiah. And um, in that way, because Jesus sent the apostles out, um, the teaching authority of the apostles is passed on through the ages. The successors of the apostles are the bishops. So the bishops that we have now in the church are actually the successors of the apostles. So a successor is, um, say someone is a king and then their son becomes the king after them. Well, they're the successor to the throne or a president, um, a new president is elected. And now they're the, they're the successor of the presidency. So it, it carries the line down in that way. And the apostles were first, but now our bishops have gone down the line and they are the direct successors of the apostles. And they're in union with the Pope. They carry on the apostles' mission to witness to the truth of Jesus. 
With the assistance of priests, the bishops proclaim the good news and teach in Jesus' name. Because the church is built on the foundation of the apostles, she is called apostolic. So that's what we mean when we say um, one holy Catholic and apostolic church. And remember, Catholic means worldwide. We talked about that. But apostolic means it comes directly from the apostles. And, so, and there's no other church that can say that they can trace um, their, they can trace their bishops or their leaders all the way back to the apostles, all the way back to Jesus. And the Pope is the successor of St. Peter. So St. Peter was the first Pope, but then after that, there was another Pope elected and another Pope, and they were successors all the way down to Pope Francis now, who we have as Pope. So we can trace that all the way back to the time of Jesus. Teaching and learning are wonderful abilities when you use them in harmony with God's plan and in the light of God's truth. Members of your family and of your parish community help you to come to know about God and trust in his love and guidance. As your teacher, the church faithfully passes on what God has revealed through his son, Jesus. The church teaches by example and by handing on her beliefs and traditions to her members. And up right up there, um, you should be on page 167. On the top right, it has a little Catholic faith words box, a purple box. And it gives you the definition of the Pope. And we just talked about that a little bit. But the Pope is the successor of Peter, the Bishop of Rome, and the head of the entire Catholic Church. So he's our leader. Um, okay. So it has a share your faith box down here. So get out your pencil and get ready to write a few things. Think about those who have taught you about the Catholic faith and what you have learned from them and write two examples here. So it has an exa it has space for you to write in two people. This could be um, Father Michael. It could be Father Ann. It could be one of your Sunday school teachers you've had in the past. It definitely could be your mom or your dad or an older sibling or aunt or uncle or grandparent. Whoever's really taught you about the Catholic Church, write their name in there and then write what you learned. So what did you learn from that person? So um, normally in class I give you time to do these activities but so that our video doesn't end up too long, what I'll have you do is go ahead and pencil in a couple people right now, and then after the video, go back and write in what you learned from that person. Okay, it says to share with a partner some of these things that you learned. Um, we can't really do that right now, but you could share it with your parent if they're willing uh, to go through the lesson with you, and you could share it with your, uh, maybe a sibling, if they're willing to do that. So depending on how much time you have, um, you could share that with someone. But go ahead and write down a couple people and you can go back and think of, really think about what did this person teach me? Um, and how has that brought me closer to Jesus and closer to understanding about the church? All right, so let's go to page 168. And we have a couple more Catholic faith words there. The first one is the magisterium. And the magisterium is the teaching office of the church, which is all the bishops in union with the Pope. So it's the Pope and all the bishops together. The magisterium has the teaching authority to interpret the word of God found in scripture and in tradition. So it it's helpful in that uh, we're not just reading the Bible and thinking, well, I think it that it means this in a certain scripture. And then maybe your friend reads it and said, well, no, I think it means this. But we actually have a teaching magisterium in our church so that we can read what does the church teach? What has been handed down? What, what do we believe as Catholics? And then our second word is infallibility. The gift of the Holy Spirit to the church by which the Pope and the bishops in union with him may declare definitively the, that a matter of faith or morals is free from error and must be accepted by the faithful. So infallibility means um, we'll talk about this a little bit more, but it means that, um, and, and it is a gift by the Holy Spirit. It means that the church, 
by which the Pope and the bishops, in union with him, may declare definitively. So they're going to say that for sure, this matter that they're talking about, it, it's about faith or morals, is free from error. So at that point, the Holy Spirit has led them to make that decision, and we can trust it, because it's what our church teaches. The teaching office. Who are the teachers in the Catholic Church? Together, the Pope and the bishops make up the magisterium, or body of teachers. The Pope is a successor of Peter. We talked about that. He came directly from Peter. He's the Bishop of Rome and the, in, the head of the entire church. Each bishop is also the leader of a particular diocese. Bishops have received the fullness of the Sacrament of Holy Orders and work together with the Pope to guide, teach, and make the church holy. So they are all priests. They have, they have received the Sacrament of Holy Orders. With the guidance of the Holy Spirit, the Magisterium protects and explains the Word of God. So it's protecting it. It's protecting it from, from error. And sometimes there are groups of people who get erroneous ideas about the Word of God um, and how it's interpreted. And the magis Magisterium is protecting that so that we get the truth about what, how to interpret Scripture. And it safeguards it for future generations as part of the church's sacred tradition. Because the Holy Spirit guides the church in the right direction in crucial matters, the magisterium officially declares that her most important teachings are free from error. This is called the doctrine of infallibility. We talked about that a little bit. Okay. Um, if you guys can hear that, my one of my kids' alarms is going off, so just try to ignore that. <laughs> I'm doing this in the morning before anyone else gets up. So apparently someone had their alarm set and they're, they're not quite waking up. But uh, we'll try to ignore that at this point. Hopefully you guys can't hear it as loudly as I can at this point. <laughs> so on to page 169. Guidance of the Holy Spirit. Guided by the Holy Spirit, the church's leaders settle certain important questions of faith and morals in order to help deepen understanding of the teachings of Jesus and the apostles. This understanding also helps the people of God make right choices in living good moral lives. Infallibility is connected to another important fact about the church. The Holy Spirit guides the people of God to the truth. When the people of God, the Pope, the bishops, and all the faithful come to a common understanding about an important or central truth, truth they can be sure that they are correct. This is called the sense of the faithful. The Holy Spirit works through the community of the faithful, giving the community itself a faith-filled understanding of the truth. Okay, so the Holy Spirit is guiding us, the Pope, the bishops, all of us um, in our understanding of scripture and, and tradition. We have another box there on page 169 connect your faith fill your toolbox with a partner add to this group of tools you will need to build your lifelong journey of faith how can the church help you to use these tools more effectively so you can think about um tools that you'll need to build your lifelong journey of faith what could you need maybe uh, think about that what will you need for your because uh, this, this life is a journey. This is a journey with Christ. It's a journey with God. And we want to get to heaven. That's our goal. But what will we need for that journey to get there? One thing we might need, you guys might be thinking of, is your Bible. Because that is God's word. And it's bringing us his truth. How about the sacraments? That would be very important. Going to the Sacrament of Reconciliation regularly going to the sacrament of the Eucharist, um, going through confirmation, which you guys will be doing soon, and baptism. Um, most of you were already baptized when you were young. So those are, are important tools. As far as um, some other things, maybe trust, faith, hope, um, prayer. It's super important that you're connecting with God and having that personal relationship with him, that you're listening for what he has to tell you and that you're communicating your thankfulness to him and praising him 
and asking him for legitimate needs when you do have them is trusting him so that prayer is a big one and love right and good deeds helping others so go ahead and write down the things the tools that we talked about that you think would be the most important ones for your journey we're going to go ahead and move on to page 170. How does the church speak about her teaching? The Catholic Church uses several terms and titles when it speaks about her teaching. These ways of talking about the church allow all her members to be precise and to avoid misunderstanding. And that's one thing that will help in, um, we were talking about the deposit of um, I don't know if we use those words. I can talk about being precise, right? Earlier, um, we were talking about the magisterium and how they, the magisterium interprets teaching of the word of God and scripture and tradition and how important that is to safeguard that so that we're free of error. Well, this page on 170 is talking about being precise in what we're talking about so that we can be free of error, so that we don't people don't misunderstand what we're trying to say. It has a words for understanding section down here um, on the first box on the left. Remember that doctrine or dogma is an important teaching revealed by Christ as taught by the church's magisterium. As a Catholic, you are required to believe these revealed truths. So uh, the doctrines of the church or the dogmas are really important, important truths. And um, those are taught by the magisterium, which is what we were just learning about. So it has at the bottom, um, name one church doctrine that you know. So that will be some, some homework for you to write in. Figure out, hmm, what is a church doctrine? And, and what church doctrine do I know? And there may be in the back, let's see, the back of the book has some really good information. Um, I wonder if it has some spots that talk about doctrine. And you guys can use the back of the book. It has some great prayers, has the creed here. Um, let's see, we've got the order of the mass and the liturgical year. It's got the Ten Commandments, the Beatitudes. So, so I was wondering if it might be of help to you with this, but I'm not sure. Parish and the Sacraments. Oh, and, and it's got the Stations of the Cross. If you guys want to do the Stations of the Cross since you're not able to do it at the church this year, it's on page 327. You guys can find the, the Stations of the Cross. Okay. Well, I don't see um, a chart or anything. So I will let you go ahead and do that as homework. Find out one doctrine of the church and, and write it in there. And when we come back next week, when I do your next lesson, lesson 12, we can go over some doctrines of the church at that point. Right underneath that box, it says, Recognize that an important ministry of the Pope and bishops is to teach with guidance of the Holy Spirit. It is their duty to interpret the Catholic faith and explain it to all the people. And then right there it says, What is the name of the current Pope? I think we talked about that earlier, but I'll leave that for homework too. I want you to write down, you guys probably know, but in case you don't, find out that information. What is the name of the current Pope? Ask your parents. Um, to help you research these questions. Um, on the box on the top right, appreciate that a catechist or teacher is someone who teaches the faith. So a catechist would be like, like me or any of your Sunday school teachers, um, like Miss Catherine, or anyone who teaches you the faith. Most catechists are lay people. So and a lay person is somebody who's not a priest. I think we've talked about this before, not a nun or a monk but just an ordinary person. How did your catechist discover his or her calling to teach? Okay, so for this one, you need my information and my help. Um, how did I discover my calling to teach, teach you guys um, Sunday school? 
and I had a friend and uh, she still teaches at um, at All Saints she's been teaching um, second grade this year but it's uh, Celestina Gonzalez and some of you may know her or may have had her she asked me if I would teach Sunday school because she used to run the program she asked me if if I would teach many years ago and um, I was scared to do it because Norm, I had little kids at the time. Only one of my kids was up to that age because she asked me to teach sixth grade. But I did feel God calling on my heart because I've always loved to share the gospel. And I wasn't always Catholic. I grew up in a, a Protestant church, but after I became Catholic, it's just, you know, I've always felt that pull to share about Jesus. And um, I love to share with you guys. Um, the good news of the gospel and the truths in scripture, I felt called by the Holy Spirit to do that. So I went ahead and I conquered my fears and I got up there. And so I've been teaching for quite a few years now. But um, so sometimes it comes from a friend asking, giving you that final push. And if you've been hearing God calling you to that and, and put it to prayer, that is one way um, that you can... Uh, make a decision about whether to do something like that. Okay, so we're on our second box on the right, the, the one underneath, we're on the bottom right. Understand that priests and deacons assist the bishops in carrying out the teaching ministry. They do so by preaching, celebrating the sacraments, and guiding the people. What have you learned about the church from your parish's priest or deacons? So again, that's more, more homework that you can do. What have you learned about the church from Father Michael or Deacon Dave or Father Ann um, or from another priest or deacon that you happen to know? And you can write down something that you've learned about the church from them in that box. So when we come back next week, um, I'm going to see if I can remember to go over this page again and uh, give you some answers to those questions so that you can go back and correct um, correct your own homework, but do a little research and see if you can figure that out. I know you guys have more time than usual at home. Ask your parents first bef before you get on the internet or something like that to research um, and have them there with you. But as long as you have permission, um, be a wonderful thing to look up some more about church doctrine, uh, about our current Pope, and then um, to write down some things that you've learned from a parish priest or a deacon. So on page 171, we see blessed Pope John Paul II, um, one of my favorite saints. He lived from 1920 to 2005. One of the jobs of the Pope is to help explain the Catholic faith to all people. Blessed Pope John Paul II traveled to 129 different countries around the world, telling everyone about God's love and mercy. He went to some countries that a pope had never visited before, like Mexico and Haiti. Blessed John Paul also knew another one of his jobs as pope was to teach the people of God how to make right choices in living good moral lives. To do that, he wrote many special letters called encyclicals, telling us about Jesus, Mary, and God. It says, how can you tell people about God's love? And Pope John Paul II wrote many good, uh, good things down. And I hope that um, you guys will take the time to read some of those things, to look up. Maybe next year, if we do Saints Museum, you guys consider um, doing Pope John Paul II. And it says blessed here, but that's because this book was written before he became a saint. So he is a saint now, and he would be a great one to learn more about. Um, and he's one of our more modern popes. So you guys could understand a bit about the history of his life as you, if you looked it up. It's very interesting. He lived through uh, very, very um, hard times when he was young in Poland and his country was um, under siege you know, from a lot of political things going on at that time. So think about that. How can you tell people about God's love? Because we're all called to share the gospel with others and to tell others about God. So how can you do that? 
Uh, and in the box there, live your faith. Name one thing about the Catholic faith, faith that you would like to teach someone else. And how can you do that? So you go, go ahead and think about that and you can write that in. One thing about the Catholic faith that you would like to teach. So would you like to teach someone about uh, Jesus's love for others or about how we should give to the poor or about how we should forgive? Um, or probably the most important thing there, in fact, this is the most important thing, how Jesus came down to the earth, how God came down to forgive us for our sins and to bring us to salvation and how he developed his church here on earth to help us on our journey. And then name something about your faith that you do not understand. So this could be something that you wanna ask your parents about, that when we finally get to back to class at some point, you want to ask uh, in class. You want to ask maybe Miss Catherine or, or you want to ask one of our priests. Um, so write that down and then make sure that you ask somebody about your question and they can help you find the answer to it. All right, so we're almost done here. We have our chapter 11 review that we usually play tic-tac-toe with and I'm sorry that we can't play tic-tac-toe with it, but. Hopefully we'll be able to get back to class at some point and do that. If not this year, then uh, for you fifth graders, next year, um, you'll be coming back. Okay, so on page 172, it has a prayer. Um, and it also wants us to read some scripture. I do not have my Bible right here, but I will go grab it, be right back. All right, for this one, it wants us to look up Matthew 5, 17 through 20. So I'm going to go to Matthew. So the Matthew's where? It's going to be the first book of the New Testament, right? The first gospel we come to. That would be, in my Bible, it's about here. So a little bit closer to the back. If you guys have a Bible, you want to pause and go grab, you could read this with me. Um, Matthew 5, 17 through 20. So we're going to look at Matthew chapter 5. It's going to be a, a bigger number in there, the 5. And you're going to look through the paragraph, through these little teeny numbers until we get to number 17, 17 through 20. Okay, so we're all set when we get to that point. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord now and forever. Jesus is our teacher. He knows our needs and answers our longing for wisdom and truth. Listen to Jesus' teaching from the Sermon on the Mount. And then we're going to read our scripture. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have come not to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen. I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter nor the smallest part of a letter will pass from the law until all things have taken place. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever obeys and teaches these commandments will be called greatest in the kingdom of heaven. I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Grateful for the teachings of Jesus, we turn to God in prayer. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, I pray for all these students, these fifth graders at, from All Saints. We pray that you'll bless them and their families, keep them well, keep their hearts full of hope during this time when we might be a little scared, when we, things might be a little bit different. We're at home more often than usual. 
Please bless these kids, bless their families, help them to find love and hope in you, to take extra time to pray or read their Bibles and to do these lessons. These are great, a great group of kids, Lord. I pray that you'll be with them. I pray you'll be with people all over the world um, right now. We seek you, we ask you to forgive us our sins and bring us close to you. Okay, Lord, hear our prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oops, it looks like I I left out the Lord's Prayer. We were supposed to do that too, but you can do that at home if you like. Okay, so all we have left to do is our chapter review. Um, so let's go ahead and turn to page 174. That's the next page. You're probably already on it there. Number one, which apostle did Jesus call the rock? And to whom did Jesus give the keys to the kingdom of God? Well, we talked about this at the beginning. You can write in your answer. You could pause right now and try to do your whole sheet if you want to, because I'm going to go over the answers right now. The first one, so you've got underneath you have, um, it almost looks like a crossword puzzle, but it's not crossing. Um, it's going to be Peter. Now, Peter was that first pope, right? And he's the rock. Jesus gave him the keys to the kingdom of God. Number two, what is the quality of being error-free in matters of faith and morals? So this is a big, long word. starts with an I, and we talked about this today. It's called infallibility. So that's that, what the Holy Spirit gives um, in matters of faith and morals for um, the Pope. The quality of being error-free. Okay, when he speaks um, ex cathedra, which is a, a special way that he speaks at times. And during that time, uh, infallibility comes into play. Number three, what is the church's teaching office called? Well, we talked about that too. That's called the magisterium, the magisterium. And you can look back in your book to know how to spell that if you need to. Who guides the people of God? So we're on number four. Who guides the people of God to the truth and preserves them from error in crucial matters? So who is guiding at this point? Well, that's two words. That would be the Holy Spirit. And so if you take all of those uh, letters that are circled in there and you unscramble them, that's number five. Whom did Christ send out to teach and baptize all nations? The apostles. So if you unscramble those letters, it ends up apostles. All right, number six. Uh, and so we're matching at this point. Learning to be like Jesus. You should be matching that one to your lifelong task. That's your task ahead of you. Learning to be like Jesus. It takes a lifetime. Okay, number seven. Assist the Pope and the bishops. So who does that? That one should be priests and deacons. Number eight, the successors of the apostles are the Pope and the bishops. Number nine, important teaching revealed by Christ, taught by the magisterium, that is doctrine. And number 10, teacher of the faith, who is often a lay person, and that is a catechist. All right, so that concludes our lesson uh, for this week. I am going to hopefully get another lesson out, do lesson 12 for next week. But thank you so much for joining me. And um, we'll go over a couple of those things that, that I asked you to do for homework when we come back. All right. I'm praying for you guys. And I'm just hoping you're having a good time right now at home. Bye-bye. Oh, and here's my cat, Tabby. She wanted to say goodbye, too.